To create a test method inside a test class, we create a public method and prefix its name with the word test. For example, here we have two test methods. And when we run these tests, the output tells us just that. There were two tests. Let's see what happens if I add another method, but don't prefix the name with the word test. Let's put some test code in here. For example, we'll create a new user, set the first name property, and assert that the property is set to the same value. This is of course a bit of a meaningless test, but this is just an example. Now if we run the test again, we can see only two tests have been run. This new test method wasn't run because it doesn't begin with the word test. If I change the name so that it does, now when we run it, the test method is executed. The idea behind the test method names is that you make them as descriptive as possible, so it's clear exactly what the test method is testing. This makes the code like documentation. It serves to show what the code you're testing should do. If you don't want to name your methods like this, there is an alternative to tell PHP unit that a method is a test method. For example, some people think that camel case like this is difficult to read and prefer to name their methods with underscores separating the words. For example, let's change this method name to use underscores instead and also remove the test prefix from the beginning. If we run the tests again, this method no longer runs, as is to be expected. However, if we add a doc block to this method that contains the at test annotation like this, this tells PHP unit that this is a test method that should be executed. And if we run the tests again, now this method is run. So you can either name your methods prefixed with the word test or add the at test annotation in a doc block before the method. Personally, I prefer the former, but it's up to you.